welcome to today's video. Today we're going to do a recap of our first attempt at the British Masters Track Championships. But before we do that, as ever, go on, you know you want to, hit that subscribe button and let's roll the intro. Zoom. So, the British National Masters Championship. Four days down at the Newport Velodrome in Wales. <sighs> what an eye-opener that was. Now, let's remember, this is my first ever attempt at track racing. We haven't done any before. We've obviously practiced on the track. We've done some tests. Te mm, do you want to come test? You want to do some dummy races as part of DST training sessions, but we've never entered a competitive track race prior to entering these championships. So, boom, in at the deep end. And what a deep end it was. I tell you what, what an eye opener. Quite humbling, knowing how much of a deficit you, you are, your performance, to the other competitors. Going into this championships, I felt, do you know what? I'm a relatively strong cyclist. I'm pretty fit. Yes, admittedly, I've put on a little bit of weight, but at the end of the day, weight isn't really as important on the track as it is out on the road. In fact, it isn't really important at all. Fairly strong, fairly fit. Didn't have any baseline as to where my performance would be. So it is a very humbling experience to set foot on the track, set a time, and then watch as your position drops lower and lower and lower. Effectively, out of the four events that I entered, I did pull out of the fourth day. So really, I only did three events. On all three events, I came last. Now, on the first event, the 750 meter time trial, I knew that was gonna be difficult. I'm no pursuitist, and three laps of the track, full gas, is, is right on my limit. In fact, on the day, possibly to do with uh, loading fitness coming down, because it, it wasn't really the best uh, preparation for the championships. We were feeling a little bit under the weather. Um, if we look at our Strava metrics now, they've been dipping, 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 dipping. So, wasn't really feeling that great. Three laps of the track is definitely more than what I could achieve on that day. So I ended up three seconds adrift. So one second per lap. Now that's not that much. However, bearing in mind one lap of the track is only 250 meters. Now that said, with a 750 meter time trial, my first attempt, yeah, I unclipped. Uh, my, my, my pedals were not tightened enough. I don't, I don't wear straps and I unclipped. Coming around to do my second attempt, the commissaire said, now, if you unclip a third time, you don't get another chance. So I had that in my back of my mind. So as I pushed out of the start gate, I definitely, definitely did not push as hard as I had on the first attempt. And that, of course, is gonna have an impact on my top speed. So, three seconds of drift. Do you know what? It gives me a base. I know where I can work on. Coming into day two, sprint day. Now, this was the day that I was looking most forward to because having no track experience, the sprint, or at least the flying 200, it's just me and the clock. Similar to the, similar to the time trial. I wasn't looking forward to doing match sprints because I know there's a lot of tactics involved in the match sprints. But, flying 200... Um, never done it before properly. I understand the theory. Take your time to get up the banking. Take your time to build up your speed, build up the power, and then unleash hell for the last lap. Um, coming into turn four, you should be powering as you come down that straight. 
cross over the start finish line, probably round about the red line, maybe just between the red and the blue, and then hit the apex of, the, of turn one as you hit the black line. So I know the theory. Very, very nervous. Speaking to Andy, the uh, coach from PDQ who was looking after me that day, um, he had me all prepped up. He gave me a, he gave me a good push. I moved up onto the barrier and I felt like I was not pushing hard to go up the banking. I felt like I was maintaining the effort round the bank and then I felt like I was increasing speed but not pushing but just using that free speed to build up more speed as you come down the banking. Now I felt like I did a good job however when it came to turn four on lap two when I was meant to stand up out the saddle and push. I didn't feel like I could push much. In fact, I only probably achieved about 800 watts. Um, I then attempted to hold the black line. He told me, push down on your left. This will help you get down on that black line and hold that line. Now, the first thing that Lewis, my friend, said as soon as I came off was, do you call that black line? Um, so yeah, I, pff, it wasn't recorded. Um, I didn't have anyone there with me recording, so I don't know, I can't say for definite where my positioning was, but I do know that my time was 13 point something seconds. Um, I'll need to go back and have a look. Um, everyone else, and to be fair, there was only four other riders that day. There was meant to be eight in total in our category. There was only five of us turned up. So the other four were all between 11.1 and 11.5. And I was 13 point something. Now that was an absolute slap in the face because a 200 meter sprint to then be two seconds adrift. Wow, that's that's a huge margin. And um, yeah, I was really, really down. Um, in fact, I didn't really want to go on, but you've got the match sprint to go. Now, I, I wasn't looking forward to the match sprint. Um, there wasn't really much to be said from Andy because, well, I'm two seconds adrift. Um, what he did say to me, though, was, do you know what? Go out, have fun. Do you know, and Lewis also said this, these guys have big gears. They take a time to, to wind it up. Why don't you just go from the gun? You've got three laps of the track. Just do it. Now, I knew I couldn't do three laps based on the day before, so I thought I could do two laps. And Andy was like, yep, go for it. Go for it. So we did the first lap. Um, I drew, I drew position two on uh, heat one, and um, my opponent started high up the track. So Andy's like, right, that's it. They're, they're going to push you wide. Going to push you high. They're going to keep you up there. Um, as I said, match sprinting has a lot of tactics involved. Now, admittedly, they started high, but we dropped down quite low to begin with, and I reckon either my opponent was on to me immediately, or he's just very, very good because we did the first sort of three quarters of the lap and then I tried to go and he went immediately. Now he's holding the black line, he's got me up on the red line. In fact, he's probably on the red and holding me slightly higher than the red. I just could not get round him. He was far, far too strong and eventually he powered off on the back straight. I sat up. And he finished way, way in front. So far in front, in fact, that he came up to me as we were rolling around the Cote d'Azur at the end to say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to put that much of a gap into you because it was kind of embarrassing. And I'm like, do you know what, mate? It's fine. Because it was fine. The Flying 200, I felt <sighs> slap in the face, very despondent. Going into the heats, I knew exactly where my position was. I was behind, I was on the back foot, I was far, far slower, not got as much power as these guys. So do you know what? If I came last, I came last. I knew it, I knew where my position was. Going into the repechage, three up sprint, I was in position one. The guy that was in position three took off immediately. So I followed. And I did my best performance of the championships, my best power, my best uh, one minute power. In fact, my best one minute power for 2021. I smashed it. But I couldn't get, I couldn't grab his wheel. I just could not. And as we came into turn four on lap three, the other competitor came past me. And so that was it. I was out of the championships. Um, interestingly enough, the chap who beat me went on to take fourth. 
um, the chap who came first went through to the finals and came second. So the guy that beat me the first time round, no, I tell a lie, the guy who beat me the first time round got beat in the semi-finals by the other competitor who then went on to take the gold. So coming into day three, it's the endurance events and this was the scratch race. I was not looking forward to this because, as I said, no competitive racing and very, very small amount of actual track time and especially bunch track time. It makes me very nervous. Um, I said to quite a few teammates from, from you know, various, various days, various times, I can happily sit in the middle of a bunch in a crit race, but, in a, but on the track, it makes me nervous because you have a lot less control, obviously, over your machine. Um, they took off immediately, so essentially you roll out the gate, you roll up onto the back straight and then the gun goes if you're in a group. Now I didn't feel that we were in a group, but the commissaires decided, boom, there's the gun, off you go. I was on the back foot already, I think position three or four from the back. Push, 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 trying to get up, trying to get up, trying to get up. Uh, one guy cut right in front of me on lap one. No idea why he did that, but that, that rattled me. I was in the black line at that point and he cut right in front of me on the corner. They really rattled me, pushed me onto the Cote d'Azur, did not like that. Tried to catch up with the bunch. The bunch swung up and slowed down as we're coming around the next corner. I don't know why, but I kind of slowed with them, probably because I was on the limit. But then, of course, as they came off the bank and they automatically sped up and I was, I was gapped again. So, starting with the gap, ended with the gap. I only lasted about eight minutes and I pulled out. Those eight minutes were at full threshold and above. So it's no wonder that I pulled out. I was pissed off, really. I got changed as quick as I could. I put my bike in the car, I packed up and I'd already decided, you know what? I'm not coming back for day four. Um, but yeah, what can I say about the championships? PDQ teammates, I love you all. What a lovely family to be involved in. Um, just the general feeling, everyone supports each other, no prima donnas, lots and lots of chat. Everyone is there to do their best and wants each other to do their best and I absolutely love that. So I cannot wait to get back down and race with you again. Unfortunately, you're in Newport and I'm away up here. There's a bit of a gap. Um, absolutely loved getting involved, getting stuck in. Um, I had some other friends there, Gary. Um, did quite well himself, met some other competitors who were previous world champions, previous national champions, had a great chat with, with a few of them. And um, yeah, what a lovely what a lovely three days that I spent in, in Wales. Cannot wait to go again. And that's the thing. We now have a baseline. We now know where we are and we cannot wait to get on the track and work and work and work. So next time we can see an improvement. So watch this space, that is what the target is going to be for the coming year, is develop more and more into a stronger track rider. So that's it from today's video. If you have enjoyed it, as ever, drop me a thumbs up because you know I appreciate that support. Hit the like button, smash it, tickle it. Subscribe to the channel, you know you want to, you really want to. Use the notification bell so you know when videos go live. Speaking of live, we're coming into the winter months so there will be lots of live streams upcoming with races on Zwift. Links down below for them. As ever, keep those hands clean, look after yourself and each other. And I'll see you soon for some new videos. Right on. Zoom.